Hello there, I'm Sam Moser, and behind me is the Ford Transit van that I converted into a camper. My wife and I, along with our dog Marley, are currently living out of it full time as we travel around North America. I'm creating a video series all about how I converted this cargo van into a tiny home on wheels, and I wanted to get started with a tour of it. In the next video, we'll go back to the beginning of the build process, and I'll show you exactly how I built it. But for now, let's see how it came out. Let's go. Let's check out the inside. So with a cargo van, you don't have a whole ton of space to work with. You have about 11 foot by six foot in here. And so the main goal of the design was to get as much function as possible into that amount of space. So the way it's laid out is as follows. We have the kitchen area up here that has a sink, a stove, some other storage, We'll go over that in more detail in just a second. Then we have a general area here in the middle. We have a bench. We have a, a table that slides out. The option to pull out the cooler as the second bench. And then across the back is the bed area. Underneath the bed is what we call the garage. That's accessible when you open the back doors. And it's mostly storage down there, but it also houses the water tank, the electrical system, and some of the bits and pieces like that. Yeah. Now let's take a closer look over at the kitchen area. The kitchen is mostly centered around the sink cabinet. And it's actually quite a bit larger of a sink than you would normally see in a van, especially of this size. So what we did is we made these countertop inserts that fit in the sink. They all sit flush and it allows you to use the whole space as countertop space if you want or pull one or both of these out to use it as sink space. So most of the time we just use the small side of the sink here, but you also have the option to pull out this one. It'll fit into that slot there as well. And then you have quite a big sink area here accessible running water and it's been working out quite well so let me slide this back in here around the sink we also have paper towel holder some places to hang uh, towels and those are kind of things that we put up after we got going just as we found what was necessary underneath the countertop here is storage. So we have these two really big deep drawers. The top one here acts as kind of a pantry as well as holds cups, plates, silverware, some extra little Tupperware containers and that kind of thing. You got to have locks on everything in a van because as you're driving otherwise everything will just fly open. So locks on everything. Bottom drawer here, more storage. This one holds mainly pots and pans and some other cooking utensils. To the side of that, we have a big drawer in here. We have a little hanger for a trash bag, as well as the gray water tank. So for our gray water tank, we use a seven gallon container and that's plumbed to drains on both of the sinks. Uh, to empty it, you just disconnect that quick connect valve and pull the tank out. Um, we also have a water filter in the back there. That's that silver thing in the back corner. And so all the water after it gets pumped through the tank goes through that filter before coming out of the faucet. Um, and then there's a little more storage. We keep our extra soap down here. Um, and a little small shelf to store a few jars in right there on the inside of the cabinet. So one unique thing about the way this bottom drawer and this cabinet door are built is that the toe kick of the cabinet is built into the drawer and the door themselves. So this was done to maximize space and get as much usable space in the drawer as possible. So normally in a cabinet, you lose that bottom four inches to be the toe kick. 
But here, it's built into the drawer, so you still get that space here where as you're standing using the counter, your toes have a place to go, but you're not losing some of that depth for storage. Same thing here on the cabinet door, where built into it is the little kick, and this one doubles as that little shelf I was saying. Up above the sink here is more cabinets. So this one mostly acts as a pantry. Other food and goods stored in here. Um, all the upper cabinet doors have gas springs on them. So they, they stay open and don't fall on your head. And then they have these push button style locks. So while you're driving that can't fly open. To the side of those cabinets here, we have a little uh, shelf hold some odds and ends. And then this cabinet drawer here actually holds most of our toiletries and our bathroom goods. Uh, across the top here, we have a mason jar rack. And then right under that, we have our spice rack, which is located just above our stove here. Okay, so on this side, we have our stove and it doubles again as countertop space because you need everything in here to kind of serve multiple purposes to get everything you need in a space this size. So to use the stove, you flip this up and there's a latch that it catches on the side. And then we have a two burner range. So this is a propane powered stove. And basically I call this whole cabinet our propane island. Because in order to minimize where I had to run propane lines, I kept it all contained to this cabinet here. So the propane tank actually sits inside this locker, and that's a sealed off locker that's vented through the floor. The door to get in and out of it is accessible from the outside there, from the, you know, open the slider door, and that makes it easier to change the tank in and out so you're not dragging it through here. And then the other propane powered utility we have is a heater, and that sits under here and then blows the hot air out through this valve here. The thermostat though for that is located on the wall over there. We'll show that in just a second. And that allows you to reach the control for that from bed a little easier. The uh, other thing in the cabinet here is just one more little drawer. Uh, there was just a little bit of space there, so threw a drawer in. And this one's got um, spatulas, knives, just other cooking goodies. One last thing while we're over here, um, in front of the door we have a bug screen as you probably saw on the way in, which we found that to be pretty crucial depending on where you are. And then across the doorway here is a curtain rod, but it's actually built extremely strong so that it can double as a pull-up bar. So, a little exercise in too. In the center here, we have two doors that lead through to the cab of the van. And so you can just open these and then you have a nice easy passageway between the two areas. Now, a lot of people when they build out vans, they leave it all as one open space between the front seats and the back of the van. Now, there were two main reasons why I wanted to put a partition in. The first one is just for privacy. Uh, you can close these off the front of it just looks like a work van with a white wall, um, and it kind of helps with the stealth factor. The second reason though was for the thermal properties. So in the front of the van, you got a big windshield, you got doors on either side with windows, and all that glass makes that area really hard to insulate well. So I built this wall which is insulated throughout with rigid foam insulation. And that helps, you know, trap the heat back here in the winter and not lose it all out through that glass. And conversely, when it's hot out and you kind of have all that heat coming through the glass there, it helps keep this area isolated a little better. Going through to the cab here, show a couple bits. So for the most part, it's just the standard van cab. Um, I did add these two little shelves on the top sides here, and that just gives some extra storage. So our fridge uh, is located right here in the center under the bed, and it's on a rolling platform that you can slide out.
And then it just opens up. It has a freezer section as well as a fridge section, or you can pull out the partition and use it all as either a fridge or a freezer. Originally, when I created a layout for the van, I had this under a permanent bench right over here. And I built that bench, and what I found was it just felt too cramped. There wasn't enough open floor space, especially to give room for two people to move around. So I looked at how we could modify the design and shifted it so it would fit right under the bed here. In general, that's been working out pretty well, and we still can, we don't have stuff on the floor here, roll it out, slide it over to the side, and it acts as a second bench so someone can sit on either side of the table here. Most of the time, we don't even use that um, with the bed there. Usually one person's just sitting up on the bed. In between the sink cabinet and the bed, we have this little bench. And this bench serves a uh, second purpose. It's also where our composting toilet is housed. So, you pull the cushion off and lift the lid. Under here, we have the Nature's Head composting toilet. Um, it's a self-contained toilet that works really well in RVs, sailboats, or other small spaces. Um, a lot of people are probably familiar with them already but if you're not, you can check that out separately. On the other side of the fridge here, we have some more cubbies for storage. Um, we have a large drawer here, and this is kind of where we keep um, just a lot of odds and ends. The cool part about this drawer is that in the back, there's actually some 12 volt uh, outlets as well as USB charge ports. So we kind of hide the cable clutter in here too. To the side of this drawer, we have a little access door here, and this gives you access to a couple of the switches on the electrical system. Um, that is a cutoff for each of the charge sources, which we'll go over in a second, as well as a main system cutoff. Over here, we have some of the controls for the van. So the bottom is the thermostat for the heater. Um, I didn't mention it before, but the heater is a Propex HS2000. So here's the turn it off and the temperature setting. Um, in the middle, we have our controls for the lights. And these are actually in two zones. So we have the lights that are in all of the ceiling and that's on one dimmer. And then if we look over by the sink here, these two underneath the sink are on their own dimmer. So it allows you to adjust the lighting in here pretty well. Just above the light dimmer, we have the battery monitor, uh, and that's the Victron BMV 712. So at that, you can always monitor the state of charge of the battery, how much current is going in or out of the system, um, a bunch of other stats on the battery. Above that, a couple other useful things. We have the control for the fan, um, which is located right here in the center. That's a, a max fan, which is nice because you can run it in the rain without any water getting in. And then above that, we also have just a little thermometer so we can always check the inside and outside temperatures and humidity levels and keep an eye on things. Across the back here is the bed area. So we wanted a bed that was always set up, not something that you had to set up and take down every day. Um, if you do a design like that, there's pros and cons. You, know, you get more floor space when it's put away, but then you have the added task every day of making and unmaking the bed. So we wanted something that was permanently set up. Um, luckily, both my wife and I are on the shorter side, so we're able to fit in a width-wise bed configuration. It's really not too short though. From wall panel to wall panel is six foot. So I'm able to fully stretch out. And you know, there's these little inset areas added to get the most width possible. This direction, we're kind of somewhere in between a, a full and a queen size bed. We have nice little reading lamps to either side. And these are adjustable. They also make another good accent light. And then we have a large set of cabinets 
up above the foot of the bed here. These act as our closet space. Um, same locks and hinges on them as the kitchen cabinets. Um, show inside these here. Just close. This one though is mostly Marley's doggy storage as well as a, a few other bits. We have an extra fan that we can actually clip up here to act as a little ceiling fan if it's ever hot and we need an extra breeze. I think that's about it for the interior space. Now we'll go around and take a look at the garage. So this is the garage and it's basically the extra storage for everything. So it's pretty stuffed full with stuff. The most important thing you'll notice on the outside is again, another mosquito net, which has proved pretty handy. Um, back here, we have a shoe organizer on this side. That's been pretty handy. Um, our laundry bin actually hangs down here so we can reach from over the bed down to that, throw our dirty clothes in. I won't dig it out now, but behind this section is where the electrical system is housed. So up on the roof, we have 300 watts of solar panels, and that's going to a 200 amp hour AGM battery. And there's two charge sources for the battery. There's a solar, as I mentioned, there's also a battery to battery charger, so we can charge off the car's alternator while driving. And on any days when the battery's really low or if it's been cloudy for a while, that's a really good to have that second charge source there. And there's gonna be a full video detailing the electrical system. So when I do that one, that's when I'll really show all that, but I wanted to give a brief overview. On this side back in there is our freshwater tank. So there's a 25 gallon freshwater tank and that feeds the, the faucet at the sink, as well as there's a little connection point right here where you can hook a little garden hose spray or two. Uh, the fill port for the water tank is just above that, and we have an extra hose that we keep with it, so we can, as long as we're within about 25 foot of a water spigot, we're able to fill up the tank. Besides that, we have storage for two bikes under here. And since we moved the fridge to fit in that center space under the bed, it actually made it really hard to get two bikes in there. The space for them isn't very wide, and so they have to fit together in a very, very particular configuration. But we make that work, and then the rest is just some general storage. And that's about it back here. It's uh, really useful to have the extra space. So that's really about it for the initial tour of the van. There's a lot of things I probably missed, but I'll be covering those in future videos. So I'll be going over the full build of the van, as well as a lot of the thought process behind the design and the material choices and the, the considerations you have to think about when you're building uh, for an environment like this. So if you enjoyed this one, please subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for the rest of the videos. Thanks very much.